What's up, YouTube? My name is the Lazy Tryhard, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the fourth uh, edition of this tutorial series on LibGDX. And today I wanted to go over uh, basic file I/O, which basically, in unfancy terms, means uh, how to save something, how to save an object. Uh, because I remember I, I just finished an uh, application that I was making, and I will reveal that to you guys uh, in a later video, probably the next video, to be honest. But one thing I was really struggling with was how to uh, rend or save out an object so that uh, if your application or your game closed, that uh, the entire file would be erased and you wouldn't have anything to go off of next time. So I looked for that online uh, for libgdx. I didn't find a lot of really good tutorials on it, so I kind of created my own. And I don't know if this is the best way, the most efficient. This is kind of what I used in my application that is on the Google Play Store, um, but this is, I'm going to show you guys uh, that methodology and that kind of thought process. So uh, just starting off, we're going to have to make a player class. You kind of see that I've already uh, done that over here, uh, and I have it here. But if you don't know, what, I, I'm assuming you all know what class structure is, but one of the big things is you can basically copy all of this down. I'll put this... I'll see if I can put this up somewhere and uh, have it for you guys. But essentially, this is kind of just like a basic player class uh, that stores the position of where the player is, and it captures the texture of the uh, player. And I'm going to do the. T I'm going to explain this texture location uh, in a bit. But one of the big things about basic file I/O uh, is for anything to be saved out, it has to implement serializable. Because that's, I mean, it, serializable just means it's savable. And two methods that we're going to really need are uh, the serialize and deserialize. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on how, it ex like how this all works. But essentially, this is kind of like the basic serialize method and deserialize method, which I'll go into more depth on what they do uh, once we get into the saving the player and reading the player and whatnot. So uh, I'll have this somewhere. This is, again, a basic uh, player so that we can save them out. And what that does is it essentially gets us to not have these, like, to, we don't have to save position out to just some random vector and a texture out to some random vector. Instead, uh, we can literally just get rid of these. And actually, we're going to put this uh, in the update method because I put all my controls in the update method. Uh, of the player because that's just a lot easier um, and it just looks a lot more organized. So, uh, again, you guys should know class structure basically. So, what I'm going to do is call player.update and we should not get any errors, I don't think. No, that's a lie. Get a null pointer at that. Oh, I'm sorry. We also have to update the batch.draw. So, instead of the textures. We're going to do player dot get texture, player dot get position dot x, player dot get position dot y. Uh, so essentially we're just converting everything over and I actually have it commented wow idiot. But now it should work. Uh, we should have the same basic thing but now it's in a player class which means less code that we have to worry about and it's in a more organized fashion. So again kind of like briefly explaining the update method is essentially just the controls and we call it every time the render method is called which is ever like every second and the on create we just initialize the players so that uh, it kind of has the basic characteristics and we don't get a null pointer uh, once we call this update method because it has to be defined so now on to the thing you've all most of you guys have been here for we're going to do these things and this is going to again. This is going to work for any object. Uh, the serialize method. This serialize method works for objects. So you literally just have to make a few modifications uh, to save it. Save whatever object you want. So I'm just going to call it public. I'm going to make it a static void save player. And this you're going to put your object. For me, that's player. Uh, for you guys, that's whatever you're trying to save out. Um, it's going to throw an I/O exception, which again, just fancy terms for just an error that it catches. So for libgdx, uh, we use this thing called the file handle. And 
that's literally just the file. Uh, and we're going to, it's going to equal kind of like how we access internal files like uh, gdxfiles.internal um, to get textures. Uh, this one's going to be called local. Uh, and what local is, is, is it's essentially a, it, it's kind of like a relative file path. On desktop, it's going to save it to like right here. On Android, it's going to save it to the local path directory, which is just a place where we can, we don't really, it just accesses it. It creates that file there. We're not going to see it here, um, but it's going to be there, and we'll have a check to see if it's there or not. But it's it's going to save it out onto the Android, um, the, but a, a SD card or USB, whatever storage it has. And next, what we're going to want to do is we're going to, want to initialize, we're going to have to create another player, so saved player, and we're going to equal, set it to null, so again, it's not going to really equal anything for right now, but finally, what we're going to want to do is uh, initialize an output stream, which is just, this is what all um, basic file IO does, and yeah, just again, just follow it. Um, because that's how you would save it on a computer. So now we have this thing, we have this file, file handle, that's from libgdx, com, bad logic, that's our, that's this library. So we have a method called files.writebytes. Now it has a byte array, and we certainly don't have a byte, uh, uh, player isn't a byte array. It's a player. So what we're going to want to do is use this serialize method because what the serialize method do, does is it converts it into a byte array that we can and then um, put into this file so that we can access it later. The deserialize will basically decrypt it. So think of it like we're encrypting a player into this file. Um, when we open it up, it's going to have a bunch of gibberish so we're not going to understand. But when we call the deserialize method, that's going to decrypt it so that we have our player again. So, and that's what we're going to do in our read uh, thing. So let me show you here. Um, we're going to have to call serialize. And actually, I'm just going to put the player in. Let's get rid of this saved player. I don't think we need this for right now. Um, but uh, the append, don't worry about that. That's just, if you set it to true, it's not going to override it and create errors. Uh, if you set it to false, it's going to override whatever things you need there, and then um, it's going to work. And since it's going to try catch, we have to catch any exceptions. So just type in um, system dot out dot print ln uh, ex dot two string. That's just like if, it, if there's an error, it's going to print it out. And then finally, and again, kind of basic stuff. Uh, if out does not equal null, um, try, and this is kind of, I know this is kind of complicated, but this is kind of just like a uh, measure to make sure that the um, output stream closes in the end. And that's kind of, again, just like basic syntax for doing all this, this file IO. So we have all this done. Actually, I don't even think we need that semicolon. Um, and then finally, let's do. Let's just tell the play. Tell the system that we are uh, indeed um, saving the player. I'm just going to say saving player. So that's our save player method. Um, right now, we can't really do anything uh, because it's kind of just here. But actually. Let's create the read method before um, we actually implement these things because, again, it's just a lot easier to work with if you have both methods. So this one's also going to be a public static, but it's going to return a player um, because that's what we're going to do it because we want like player to equal read player, um, and I'll explain that in a sec. But this is also going to do an IO exception class not found exception and Again, you don't have to write all of these in. Um, I, oh, oh my gosh, freaking spelling. Okay, and then I have to return something. So uh, we're going to do player, player equals knowing we're going to return this player uh, in the end. 
just so we get rid of that error. Whew. Okay, so um, we're going to create a file handle here as well, and it's going to equal file equals to gdx dot file. It's kind of the same path that we took player dot dat, and that's the same file referencing. Um, so it's going to look for that file uh, called player dat that we've already saved, and then it's going to um, read from that file. So now this is kind of the big part where we actually uh, read it. So player equals uh, we're going to have to cast this into a player because right now um, this will this de deserialize method will give us an object. So we have to cast that object into a player so that it knows it's a player. Uh, deserialize, which is decrypting it, file dot read bytes. Okay, I'm going to explain this really quickly. File dot read bytes gives us the uh, serialized version of this byte array uh, from the file, and then since we're deserializing it, it's going to convert it back to an object, and then from that object, this player um, cast converts that object into a player that we can then use for our game. So let's see. Now that we have that. Um, I think we are good in terms of everything else. Um, it's pre pretty basic stuff um, in terms of like it's not like excruciatingly painful, excruciatingly painful, but you know whatever floats ch your boat. Okay, now in this on create, we're gonna again. This is the final thing that we have to um, look over because like if there kind of when you start a game, um, you're gonna want to know if like if you need to create a new player because the application has never it doesn't have that um, that file um, because like again if you don't have like it won't have anything to read if the file isn't there so we have to make sure that the, if that the file is there if the file's not there then we have to cr initialize a new player so how we do this is um, if um, gdx.files.local uh, player that gum it we have to put these things uh, okay and then f this is kind of like the part that is also in libgx.exists now this this right here will basically check if this file exists then it'll do this which can be player equals read player and I'm pretty sure I have to do a player dot yeah player dot read player and we're going to surround that with a try catch because it has some errors it might have to catch and chain it. okay we don't really have to worry about that uh, usually if there's like a yellow squig line it's just it just you know it's something you should worry about but not necessarily get too worked up because it's not technically an error um, else if again if it if this thing basically if this thing does not exist then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to um, initialize a new player because if there's no player to go off of, then we're not going to be able to uh, read anything. And then we're going to do a save, uh, excuse me, player dot save player. And we're going to give it the player so that it saves it out to that file. Um, and that's, I think that's it in terms of everything. Yeah, just again, just. Make sure you don't do anything drastic with your code, but um, okay. So we're gonna add some system dot outs just to like so you guys can like see this in play. System dot out dot print ln uh, player exists uh, reading file, and we're gonna say that because that'll that's literally just defining what is going on. Uh, if this is true, and what's that? Okay. Enter uh, player does not exist. Uh, creating player and saving player. So this first time, it should and fingers crossed, it should give us this um, player does not exist. Creating and saving player, and it did catch a not serializable exception. But essentially, what I'm trying to do with this texture lock um, is kind of assign 
a texture to this player because like I said texture uh, the class isn't serializable so if we try to save it out we got this Java IO not serializable exception so basically that just means it's never gonna save uh, because if we refresh it we don't get anything down here so what we're gonna ha actually have to do and I don't like doing this, this is not how I normally do it uh, but for the sake of this tutorial um, we're just gonna get rid of this texture uh, for right now and kinda make it so that the player is saveable but we're, we're so basically what we're gonna be reading is this position um, and we're gonna change the text the player texture um, and I kinda got rid of it here but batch dot draw instead of player dot oh gosh it's a long one draw I'm just gonna do this um, since we are we still have this texture up here Mario and do I still have an initialized no okay so actually we have to initialize the texture out here instead of in the um, in oh, piss on my poop stick um, GDX files dot internal uh, Mario.png. So essentially, we're we're creating the texture outside of the player class, so that we can in turn save the player class. Um, because again, you can't serialize a texture. Uh, Mario, and that's going to be the texture. And this we're going to do player dot position dot, or excuse me, player dot get position dot x player dot get position dot y and that should be good so when we run this fingers crossed everything works uh, we see this saving player player does not exist creating and saving player so that's the first time we're gonna move the dude over here so that actually we don't have any way of let me see okay so if we hit refresh right here we get this thing called player.dat that means the file saved and we get all this like what the heck is this you just d again don't worry about this just like the serialized version um, so once we run it again it's gonna actually read the file and it's gonna do exactly what he, what I expected it to do and it kinda it doesn't like change like we would assume for it to be down here but uh, we didn't do anything once we closed out the program to save the file so this dispose method is what we're gonna do uh, for right now and this is basically when the application is destroyed or exited. Uh, we're going to do save player um, player. And it's going to, I'm sorry, we have to do player dot. I, I always get freaking messed up by that. So that once we exit out, it's going to save the player. So that we don't, um, so that when we reopen it, um, it's going to work just freaking dandy. So we're going to move it over to this side of the screen and we're going to close it. And it's going to say saving player because uh, it's disposed. So now that when we open it again, it's down here. Awesome. So that's kind of basic file I.O. Um, you can add a bunch of different stuff uh, in terms of libgdx stuff like vectors, strings, anything that's serializable. And um, because you see here it implements serializable. Uh, that just, again, it means you can save it out. And actually, I've never looked to see if texture... Um, and I don't think it is implements disposable yeah it does not implement serializable so it's not savable so essentially whenever you make a player or make anything you have to if you want to save it you have to uh, have ever all these data types have to be serializable for it to work and it's freaking awesome so that's kind of the basic basic file IO um, for libgdx uh, for saving objects so thank you for watching uh, please rate subscribe comment and Hope you guys enjoy the series. I, I'm going to continue it now that I have my application finished. So, um, can't wait for that.